glad you could join us today on Edfile. Welcome to the program. I'm Ayola Kasim. Cassava is a key tuber crop that can help Africa overcome its reliance on food imports. West Africa produces 50% of world cassava, while Nigeria alone accounts for 20.2% of this output, making it the world's largest producer of the tuber. But experts are concerned that average yield per hectare is still between 10 and 20 tons. The question is, why is it difficult to increase yield on the continent? So today on the program, we attempt to answer this question and many more. Do stay with us. No other continent depends on cassava to feed as many people as Africa does, where 500 million people consume it daily. Africa's small farmers produce more than half of the world's cassava or about 86 million tons from over 10 million hectares. On the continent, 40% of the population consumes cassava as a staple crop. Cassava is the second most important crop after maize. It is a widely preferred and consumed staple as well as hardy crop that can be stored in the ground as a fallback source of food that can save lives in times of farming. So we need really to transform the value chain of cassava in Africa, which is mostly manual and traditional. We need to transform this into semi-industrial or industrial and, uh, and modernize absolutely the system. Connected to this is um, the African situation relative to population. Between now and 2050, it is well established that the African population will double, meaning we're going to have 1.2 billion people in addition to the 1.2 billion people we have already. Africa is already not sufficient for food. Every year, Africa will import a certain number of million tons of food or buy or get donations, etc. So you can imagine that if you double the population, it's going to be more than doubling the, the uh, need for food because production at the same time has to be sustained and increased. Africa can feed itself. There is absolutely no doubt about this. But we need to transform agriculture. Cassava is grown in 105 countries as staple food or as industrial crop. Africa is growing 55% of the world's production. Meanwhile, the continent has the lowest productivity, with about 52 million metric tons annually from a cultivated area of about 3.8 million hectares, farmed by approximately 4.5 million smallholder farmers. Nigeria accounts for cassava production of up to 20% of the world's, about 34% of Africa's, and about 62% of West Africa's production. The national average yield of cassava is estimated at about 9 tons per hectare in Nigeria, as against potential yield of more than 20 tons per hectare. The technologies that exist today in the CG centers, that exist today you know, in other research centers that can currently raise productivity, we don't have to be a third or half of productivity, um, of global productivity. But then there has always been a problem. The problem has always been weak delivery and extension systems. Either the government extension doesn't work or the private companies are not there. If we transform the cassava value chain and just meet only import substitution, I'm not talking of even internal consumption, just what we import, we would redirect $1.2 billion of what is being spent today to import starch and sweeteners and other things that we can produce locally, we will redirect that into African country. That's a huge um, um, amount of money that was, was going into the pockets of rural people. The Global Cassava Partnership for the 21st Century, a not-for-profit international alliance of 45 organizations, aims to fill gaps in cassava research and development in order to unlock the potential of cassava for improving food security and also increasing incomes of poor farmers through work to develop industrial products from cassava. It's not just a theory, it's not, it's not an hypothesis. We have 25 years of experimentation done in Nigeria, in Ghana, in Rwanda, in Uganda, in Tanzania, demonstrating that mechanization at large. When I say mechanization, it's not just a tractor. 
It's a, a tractor, better plants, better agronomy, uh, a cooperative of farmers, and they're selling to the market, securing your market for next year, etc. So it's a, a, a set of activities, and this is why we talk in this conference about the value chain of the cassava transformation. For example, if there is no banking system available for farmers and processors, well, the chain will not work because when you get the, all these roots coming to the typical traditional guy market, boom, they don't have the machines to, to treat uh, the, the, the material. So it's really an ensemble. Once processed further, cassava products can profitably be used as a vital ingredient in many industries. More than most crops grown by resource-poor farmers in Africa, cassava is a widely used ingredient in the animal feed industry in Europe and Latin America, and recently in Nigeria. Its starch is well accepted in the food industry in the making of adhesives for corrugated cardboard, cartons, and other packaging materials for the production of ethanol or alcohol and used by pharmaceutical industries as fillers in pills and tablets. Cassava is a, is, is a big crop by any standards in Nigeria. Nigeria is the number one producer in the whole world, producing 55 million metric tons per annum. Even at that, our production system is suboptimal. We can actually improve from the 10 tons per hectare we do to about 25 to 30 tons per hectare, you can imagine. Almost the middle, uh, the middle part of Nigeria is the key agroecological zone for cassava, as well as the southern part of Nigeria. It's a poverty crop, it's a poor man's crop, it's an industrial crop, it's an escape crop. In fact, it's a gold mine awaiting you know, uh, exploitation by, by, by practitioners uh, in the value chain. The International Institute of Tropical Agriculture has also successfully developed a genetic engineering platform for cassava varieties preferred by farmers, with higher yields, more starch, a longer shelf life, and disease resistance. While many African laboratories do not have the expertise for this type of advanced genetic engineering, the IITA is working with national and international partners to improve the capacity of government-run laboratories to establish cassava transformation platforms by training scientists, students, and technicians. Let's say, for example, the scientists discovered that using a specific uh, herbicide, these chemicals that control weeds, does an excellent job in cassava. So we will quickly inform the company that makes that herbicide that this herbicide is so good, they should promote it with the farmers. And so that's that, that with something like that, everyone wins because the company that makes that product will be selling it and making profit. The farmers that purchase it will be applying that and they will get to, in many cases, not even need to weed their cassava one time. So they save all of that labor cost and usually the labor is women and children. And so now the women and children don't have to be out in the field doing all that hard work they can be doing other constructive things to improve their lives. Um, government is also critically important. Um, new technologies, the government needs to be uh, very much aware of this and using their power to help promote those technologies through their organs. Uh, the agriculture development projects in the various states in Nigeria are very instrumental in uh, moving these ideas, these technologies forward. And then we have um, farmer organizations, um, uh, non-governmental organizations that are well organized. So these are the types of organizations we partner with. We share our knowledge with them. We can train their people and then they are the ones who actually go and s distribute these uh, technologies to millions of farmers. Cassava has been strictly associated with poverty as a crop capable of producing food in any circumstance. Consequently, cassava farmers will pull out of poverty provided they manage to increase cassava productivity. The world community has to undertake every possibility to give those farmers a chance to produce more of a better crop. That is precisely why the Central Bank of Nigeria established NASA. 
to be able to provide guarantees to investors and financiers, banks and what have you, to be able for them to, for them to feel comfortable enough to put down the money behind any project along the value chain, whether it's pre upstream, upstream, midstream or downstream. Almost all actors along that value chain are eligible to access financing, but the banks, like you rightly said, require guarantees and comfort. So what happens is the national provides up to 75% guarantees for primary production where actual agriculture happens. For the other segments of the value chain, like processing, transport, or logistics, there are varying levels of guarantees we provide, as well as interest drawback. So under the national model, the, the farmers in groups and cooperatives really don't need traditional collateralization. Our guarantees are sufficient for them to get those fundings from the banks. Women and children are heavily involved in the production, processing, and marketing of cassava. Experts are saying the attention should be weed control in cassava fields with chemicals and other means, improving efficacy of cassava processing in order to return children to school and provide women with more financial resources for better investment in education and health of their children. Farmers need to have the good varieties on time when they are needed and where they are needed. That's one of the crucial points. Once you get the variety, it's not enough to have the varieties. You need to have the right input. There's a popular belief that you don't apply fertilizer to cassava. That's not true. Cassava is a crop, is a plant. Just like us humans, the more you feed me, the bigger I get. The more you feed your cassava, the more it produce. It's simple as that. So we need to make sure that our farmers get those inputs at the right price that they can afford. But most importantly, we need somebody to offtake that cassava from their hand and give them the right price. You can't produce cassava and the market is offering you the price that is lower than your cost of production. Why should you do it? We're all in business. Cropping is not different. A common belief is that among major issues affecting the poor productivity of cassava are the lack of development of crop management and the lack of markets for products made from cassava. These issues have been solved in countries where cassava has been industrialized, though not yet in Africa. Another common belief is that some of the cassava production in Africa will have to be industrialized to make an array of local products that will help support a sustainable seed system and extension services, in turn benefiting smallholders. Smallholder farmers, subsistence farmers, for them, production, food security, making enough extra production that they can sell into the market, maybe into the local Gari market, is going to be enough. Uh, we, those farmers also could benefit from improved varieties, improved productivity, improved linkages to local markets. We're, we're blessed in Nigeria that there are decentralized Gari markets all across the country. So almost always you can find a place to sell your cassava. But now can new opportunities be opened up in terms of uh, larger scale processing, uh, mechanized gari production, the production of uh, high quality cassava flour, starch, uh, glucose. These are products that can be built from uh, cassava roots. And I think we've seen in Nigeria now increasingly the creation of some of these larger enterprises uh, that open new markets for smallholders. A lot of those larger uh, processing operations, they'll have their own plantation and they'll grow their own cassava to feed their factories, but that usually is not enough to keep those factories busy. So they have to go out and look for outgrowers and smallholder farmers in their region and then make it interesting for them by paying them for their cassava so that it'll be delivered to their factories. And that can be a win-win situation for the smallholder farmer. Hey, now I've got another place that I can sell my cassava if I have extra production. And then for the people who own the factories, this gives them the uh, turnover that they need to keep their factories busy so they can produce products that also will go to consumers and help them. High quality gary, high quality cassava flour, etc. Current efforts consist in developing a strategy based on the vision of cassava making a major contribution to food security, increasing income generation potential through marketing of traditional and processed cassava products driving rural development through industrial cassava production for food and industrial purposes. Cassava is 70%, most of the time, 70% or even more waste water. Chi Edoze Egezi is the project director of the Next Generation Cassava Breeding Project, which aims to significantly increase the rate of genetic improvement in cassava breeding and unlock the full potential of cassava.
Cassava is very important to the rural livelihoods of uh, African farmers. Cassava is an important crop that could actually transform any country's economy. And uh, in sub-Saharan Africa, more than 500 million people depend on cassava. But cassava has a lot of problems. We know that it can perform well in marginal environments where there are issues like um, uh, drought, it does better than grains. But we know that it's still um, subject to some diseases and some factors that make productivity low. So those are the things we're trying to address. But in trying to address that through breeding, you encounter a long growth cycle. It takes you a long time to grow cassava crop, 12 months, and that is very tough. And there are a lot of other genetic bottlenecks. So what we are doing is, how can we solve some of these problems to make life better for the cassava farmer in Africa? The next gen cassava team used data to study cassava viruses and their white fly vectors, weeds, low nutritive quality, post-harvest physiological degradation, and improve information exchange between researchers and breeders that will help to harmonize cassava research across the globe. What we are doing is to model. There's a, something you call modeling, it's like environmental people model. So you can predict how the weather will perform tomorrow and then you forecast. The same way we use DNA which are the building blocks of inheritance of any living organism, whether plant or animal or humans, and use that to, co to combine with our field data. We train the model based on history. Historical, we grow the uh, training population for a while. We have what you call a training population to train those models. Then you use them to match and then you make predictions. So the predictions is that if I use parent A and B, there's a very big likelihood that I'll get this. For the different traits, we have different prediction accuracies. So what we are doing is, which model gives us the best prediction accuracy for which trait? Trait is something like resistance to disease, high yield, high dry matter. So it's not the same model that works for all. But we have had a way of having a suite of models that we package and we use at once through some computer. It's a lot depends on a lot on computer uh, bioinformatics and that it, it, we, we bring together and then we make our selection and we go back to the field and make the regular crosses that the cross conventional yes this is like conventional breeding but empowered by modeling with dna despite the importance of cassava for food security on the african continent it has received relatively little research and development attention compared to other staples such as wheat, rice and maize. Experts believe the key to unlocking the full potential of cassava lies largely in bringing cassava breeding into the 21st century. Before the industrialization can happen, productivity needs to be up so that we produce more cassava than we can eat. Then we need to have the industries to be able to buy the roots and then process it. Cassava has one of the best starch in the world. And farmers, are, the industries are looking for it. But we need to consistently make sure it's produced enough so that the industries can run. Because one of the biggest problems industries have is this year there's a lot of cassava, next year there's nothing. Three months later there's nothing, they have to shut down. They can't afford that. We need to have consistent supply. And that's why policies, policies becomes Critical. It can be modified into hundreds of different types of starch. Malaki Akuroda, the director of the Global Cassava Partnership for the 21st Century, says the organization will work to ensure that cassava not only provide food, but money for the grower's pocket. Now the crop is not just food, it is also income. In terms that you can sell, you can transform, you can process into products, sell and make money. It is also a source of employment. The value chain of cassava is very long, from input provision, to production, to processing, to transporting, to packaging, to consumption and marketing. Now, all of this involves people. All of them are employed. And from their employment, they get their daily bread. From their daily bread, they pay taxes. They spend money and run the economy. That is what cassava wants to do. Cassava experts say having improved variety is not enough, 
Knowing how to cut and space the seeds on the row is very important. A fact most farmers overlook while planting. I've been breeding for cassava for 25 years. And the uh, issue is we've come up with varieties that can give you up to 40 tons per hectare, which means the potential is in the varieties. Nigeria has released most of these improved varieties, extended them to farmers, but farmers are not getting that yield that are the potential yields of these varieties. Why? The agronomy is an issue. And there is need for that and farmers training to be able to practice those best agronomic packages to have their optimum yield. The African Cassava Agronomy Initiative is placed within the context of intensification of cassava-based systems with a focus on the development of cassava agronomy recommendations to improve the productivity and quality of cassava roots in Nigeria, Tanzania, Ghana and Uganda, major cassava producing countries in West and East Africa and some spillover into East DR Congo. If we integrate cassava agronomy with safe and effective use of herbicides, it is possible to double cassava uh, yield to more than 25 tons. And the, the major issue here is tillage. If we are able to do our land preparation well and use the product correctly, I think we will hit our target. The African Cassava Agronomy Project will harness Africa and international expertise and follow a demand-driven approach whereby its interventions are responding to specific agronomy-related needs by partners already actively engaged in cassava dissemination and value chain activities in target countries. Improved productivity means people having access to markets and making money from that. So there's issues of transport, issues of supply, issues of... I said we work with those partners who are investing in that, but they also have their own challenges. It's not a perfect world we are living in. So this is one thing. The second thing is, it's good to promote, for instance, fertilizer. But you need to have the right fertilizer in place. It's good to say you need this and this, but if it's not available, you're again wasting everyone's time. So now we are working here with the Notori Fertilizer Company, who, are, who said they are interested in providing improved blends if there is some market for it. So, they would, you know, as I said, the big challenges are all those pieces of the puzzle in place. We have tried to work with partners and make that happen, but there's always a number of pieces that you need to probably still add or look for or, mm -hmm. yeah. But then are you hopeful? Absolutely. I've been working in, uh, on this continent for 25 years. Yeah. I've never been more hopeful than now. The vision of success of the African Cassava Agronomy Initiative is to deliver the necessary knowledge base and tools for accessing the knowledge to cassava scaling partners and ultimately farmers in the target countries while instituting the necessary capacity and skills for national system scientists to engage in transformative cassava agronomy. The point is there are solutions to poor yield in cassava productivity, but the challenge is ensuring that farmers access knowledge and apply this knowledge during cultivation. For until this is achieved, the goal of ensuring increase in productivity will remain a pipe dream. That's our program for the day. Thank you for watching. We hope to be back with you next week. But you can watch this program on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash channelsweb. Do click the playlist menu and then click add file. From me, Ayola Kasim, and the FR crew here in Lagos, it's bye for now.